Hello everybody, welcome. I'm going to walk you through a quick Excel example uh, with the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder, the Black-Scholes option pricing model uh, was really developed uh, in conjunction with uh, Fisher Black, Myron Scholes, and Robert Merton, and uh, and was uh, those were uh, awarded the Nobel Prize in 1997 for for this model. So a very famous model in finance and valuing derivatives, specifically options, and um, this has a real uh, application in some respect today. So if we look at this Excel spreadsheet, I already have some data filled in here. Um, just uh, I think it's easier to uh, do it this way. You guys can see the formulas are already on here. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through uh, the inputs, and then I'm going to actually show you in this example the impact uh, sigma or volatility has specifically on uh, on options pricing so here we can see the inputs we have the standard deviation and variance so this is a measure of of, of risk uh, maturity uh, time to maturity and this is in years so that is simply put one year in here but make sure uh, if you do have an option and many options do expire uh, before the one year mark it's uh, it's in years so six months you'd have to put 0.5 in etc uh, the risk-free rate uh, annualized in uh, in decimal format the stock price uh, the exercise price for the uh, the option and uh, whether this asset has a dividend yield and simply put uh, zero in this for for simplicity's sakes so remember uh, the relationship that all those guys have again you can reference back to your textbooks uh, or your books right uh, call options have uh, as the stock price goes up call option uh, should rise or the price of that call option should rise exercise price uh, goes uh, up the call option should go down when volatility goes up the call options price should go up time to expiration goes up um, call price should also go up interest rates go up call price should go up and uh, cash dividends if there is a dividend your cash dividend the call option should or price should go down right so those relationships and obviously with the put option uh, it's the reverse okay so um, the text uh, should provide you with some some details on that in terms of how those but these are the the main inputs here okay so six main inputs that we have the outputs that we'll see here uh, d1 d2 nd1 nd2 you can see here th th these are the formulas uh corresponding to to deciphering uh d1 and d2 uh, that we'll need to calculate and if we get down to the, the nd1 nd2 simply we can maybe think about this as the probability that this option uh is going to be implemented or is going to be exercised uh in in the market okay so for example here you can see uh the exercise price uh on this option here is 40 the stock price is 50 if we change this exercise price let's say we change this extra price exercise price to 60 you can see that the probability okay that this uh oops that this uh that this option it will be exercised uh, in terms of the call option is now dramatically reduced almost to, to approximately 25 percent um so we're not going to go into the weeds here uh with n1 uh, sorry nd1 nd2 uh, nd1 nd2 but again this is the formula that you can see and again you refer back to the textbook to see how uh, we derive some of these different uh, different components here so within this example uh, if we have a stock price at 50 and the exercise price at 60 the intrinsic value of for a call option in this case would be zero right right now we have the exercise price exceeding the stock price the intrinsic value would be zero but we can see that the the, the black shoals call option value right the, the value that the black shoals model you know estimates even for this call option still has about one dollar and 62 cents uh that it should be worth and this is all time value okay because there's no intrinsic value that's all going to be time value uh because this option okay the exercise price exceeds the stock price 
this is going to give us our uh, intrinsic value if it was for a put option and that would simply be ten dollars but you can see that uh, the actual put value that the black scholes model predicts for a put option here is actually only eight dollars and 69 cents so there's actually negative time value here on this option if we flip flop these guys around let's say i put this the stock price was at 60 and we change this to 50. we could see here now uh this obviously flip flops right the intrinsic value for the call option goes to 10 the intrinsic value for the put option goes to zero and we can see that now there's even more time value to the call option and now this time uh, value for the put option has also increased okay so we can go through different examples and, and i and i encourage you to go and, and create your your own spreadsheet here kind of play with some of those numbers just to kind of see how uh specific changes in these inputs impact uh, the value of the call and the put remember at the beginning of this uh video i said you know these six different factors are going to impact put options and call options differently uh, so we we change the stock we change we can change the exercise price it's going to have impacts on the call and put option and we're going to see here we're going to do a specific example with uh with sigma or the standard deviation of the call option and really see how that impacts because remember uh, volatility has a big big impact on the value of options and a lot there's lots of work tries to go in to, to identify uh, what what type of implied volatility uh, is within the market based on option pricing etc and really if if you can really understand volatility how volatility impacts some some option prices uh, you, you, can, you can potentially have a, a, an advantage within the market so here I've already filled in uh, some of the, the data here. Uh, this is going to equal uh, cell uh, B22 here. Okay, sorry, not B22, cell B18. Okay, so we have that built in. And then here, this column here, guys, uh, that I'm going to highlight, this column is simply just the price of the stock. Okay, so I'm going to say, you know, for all these different prices here, if the stock price was 5 all the way up to if the stock price was 120 uh you know how is this going to impact uh the the call price or the call value for this option and then across the the row up here you're going to see sigma and this is going to be standard deviation so let's say in our example we have a standard deviation of 0.2 i would say okay well what if the standard deviation was 0.1 and uh, the stock price was 25 what kind of values are we going to have for this call option and we're going to fill in this table okay so if we highlight this table as such and we go up here to uh to data and we go to what if analysis we can go to a uh, data table and we can input some uh some two cells in here and the two cells we're going to need uh our one is going to be uh the stock price so we put the stock price in the row input cell and in the column input cell we're going to put the standard deviation so we put again row inputs going to be stock price uh, column information is going to be standard deviation and if we press ok there uh, i did it in reverse excuse me let's go back here let's go to the data table the row input is going to be uh, the standard deviation and the column input is going to be the stock price okay there we go so we're going to see that now based on a 3% standard deviation and a $65 stock price this option should be approximately worth $18.71 this call option price should be approximately worth $18.71 so we can look at this graph we can kind of understand how uh, sigma or the standard deviation of the asset is going to impact uh, the value of a call option so let's see if we can look at this on in a graphical format so i'm just going to simply draw over this uh, data table uh, into uh, corresponding cells over here so if i just draw that over let me just do one more so we get this full data table here like this so this is just matching as the same data table as we see there but now we'll see if we can 
uh, look at this in a graphical format. So I'm going to delete this cell here. We don't need that. I'm going to highlight uh, all these cells. I'm going to input or insert uh, a scatter plot so we can visually see how volatility is going to impact uh, these different. Uh, let's just go back here. There we go. Okay, let's do that again. So back here to insert. I'm going to insert scatter plot. I'm going to this guy here and hopefully I don't drag it too far. Perfect. So let's just make this bigger here so we can see it in a much easier format. So here we're going to see this chart that's going to plot all these different lines corresponding to different levels of volatility in the asset. So you can see here the top line uh, in this dark blue shaded. This is a price for uh, a call option if you know potentially the volatility or standard deviation was all the way at 0.70 you can see that this has increased uh, the call options value as opposed to the bottom side there this light blue value is 0.1 we can see that this value uh, this risk value at 0.1 doesn't provide the call option with a higher uh, value option so that's a quick rundown of how volatility uh, can impact uh, the value of the call option. And remember, uh, these have opposite effects uh, for put options, right? We're here. This was a this was a call option example in terms of volatility. Uh, going forward, when we see uh, we could we could vary different uh, levels of, of other of, of those inputs. And they may have varying different effects on, on how that's going to impact uh, whether a call option or a put option. So that's just a quick example of Black-Scholes model and, and, and a specific example of how sigma or standard deviation can really impact the value of call option. If you have any comments, questions, you can leave them in the comment question box. Or if you're in my class, uh, please feel free to reach out and we can go over some of this in more detail.